Here we go. We get to decide exactly what we're gonna shoot on the wedding day. This may be apparent to you. I know it seems like, oh yeah, of course I know what I'm gonna shoot. And I'm sure you've been to plenty of weddings. But looking at it from a guest perspective versus looking at it from a photographer um, perspective is extremely different. As a photographer, you wanna bring your own style and you also wanna make a story, right? So you need to be hitting certain key moments in order to make that story whole when you present them a final gallery. Um, so I wanna go over specifically exactly what you should be shooting. We'll go over the how to shoot it in the next section, but right now I wanna tell you what to shoot. Keep in mind that every wedding is different. Every culture is different. There are different types of receptions. There are different types of ceremonies, and you really have to take it upon yourself to learn exactly what that culture or session is gonna be like for that particular wedding. I'm gonna go over a basic structure which includes some sort of ceremony, reception, getting ready and all that stuff. So just keep in mind that when you go to shoot a specific wedding, make sure you learn the culture. I think the one that I most uh, usually shoot is the typical American wedding culture. Um, Indian culture is very different. I've shot a couple of those. Um, also sometimes Catholic ceremonies can be very different with them moving around a lot. Um, so just know what you're doing. So the first thing would be an engagement photo session. You can decide whether you're including this in your package or not. But that's also a really good time to kind of get to know the bride and groom before the wedding day. You kind of learn the repertoire between you and them and you get comfortable with them, which is kind of rad. Um, you also get to discover what works for them and what doesn't work with them as far as like posing goes. Um, we'll go more over that later. The first thing on wedding day is getting ready. You have to decide how big the wedding is and how small it is because sometimes the groom and the bride are getting ready in totally different areas. You need to make sure to have your basics covered. Uh, so if you have a second shooter, send one person to the groom and you go to the bride or vice versa. You have to be able to cover both of those. Sometimes if you're lucky, they're both getting ready right next door to each other and that's really awesome because you can split your time between the two. Um, so make sure you get them getting ready. Typically, I arrive when the makeup artist or the hair arrives. So as soon as they arrive, I start taking photos. You don't need to be there earlier than that. Sometimes bride and grooms end up be being there early. They start drinking, whatever. I usually arrive when the makeup artist arrives or the hairdresser arrives. That's usually the best time because that's when they start to get ready. That's when the cool wedding photos of them putting eyeliner on and stuff like that works out. Groomsmen typically kind of are drinking a little bit. They don't tend to do a lot of that first. So you can start with the bride and then maybe move over to the groom and then bounce back and forth. Um, so make sure you get there for them getting ready. Sometimes the bride likes to have the wedding dress being put on on camera. Again, that's a different situation depending on the type of wedding. It also depends on if you have another shooter or not. I sometimes tend to shoot with an assistant or a second shooter who's uh, possibly a female, and sometimes that's a little more comfortable for them to be um, in a room for a case like that. Um, again, an engagement session would be helpful because then you can talk through those things and decide what you wanna do. After the whole getting ready thing uh, is over, the ceremony is about to begin. This again, you need to talk to your coordinator and your couple about how you're gonna do this. Typically, nowadays, sometimes couples are doing first looks where they end up seeing each other before the ceremony, where as in traditional, you wouldn't see the bride and groom until right before they get married. Um, nowadays, sometimes they're doing first looks, which could happen away from the church or away from all the crowd, and they want you to photograph that because you wanna catch that look on the groom and the bride when they see each other on the most important day of their relationship. So. There's that. It depends on, again, you should talk to your coordinator. So photograph that. If not that, we go on to the ceremony. At the ceremony, you're gonna be shooting candids, you're gonna be shooting the groomsmen up waiting, you're gonna be shooting the, the bride with her father waiting in the background. Those are all very small things and we'll talk more about that later. But you need to cover the ceremony pre-ceremony, you need to cover the ceremony, and you need to cover them being up in during the ceremony. There's big key moments there. There's five key moments in the ceremony that we wanna look at. Walking down the aisle is one. Really important, whether the bride is walking down with her uh, father or someone of import to her you want or him, you wanna be looking at them walking down their faces and maybe even a shot from background. The big thing is telling a story, right? So if you're a journalistic cinematic photographer, you wanna really be showing the entire world um, and them inside it. So while the bride is walking down the aisle, you wanna be looking around. What else is going on? The groomsman, the, the groom, is seeing his bride for the very first time. That can be a very pivotal photo. If you already had a first look, it won't be as big, maybe it will. Um, you kinda of have to be on your feet for that. But looking at the groomsman and them waiting, or the uh, minister or priest or whoever you have doing it, may also be a good shot. Um, this is also a good time to look at the guests. They're gonna be in awe. They're probably gonna have their phones out, which is kind of a bummer. But there's a lot of different uh, photos you can be taking during that opportunity. Don't just look down the aisle, look around you. 
Another pivotal point in the ceremony, aside from speakers and such, is the rings being put on. If you can jockey yourself in a good position to get that ring moving on, it's a great specific detail to have. It's a little different at different ceremonies. Um, it helps if you have a longer lens, like a 70 to 200. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but you should contact the the place that the photo um, is going to be that the ceremony is going to be taken in, because sometimes certain churches and places don't let you stand in certain areas, and other times they will. So if you're prepared and um, have talked beforehand, you might be able to get that in a really good shot. The kiss. This is really big, especially for the couple. Um, typically, that's one of the biggest photos that are requested at the end of the day, and it's going to look the best. There are several places to position yourself in, and again, we'll talk more specifically on how to do that, but you need to try and lock down that kiss. Whether it's you or the other photographer, just try and get in a position that you can get that photo, but get that photo. Walking down the aisle together is very fast. It comes right after the kiss, and it's really good time to get them happy, they're relaxed, like they've kind of just had this big weight lifted off their shoulder because they are married and it's really a big time for them to just release and be re relaxed. And that will come across in photos like, like no other. If you can nail that photo, you'd be great, you'd be fine, because not a lot of people know that. So they're walking down the aisle after the kiss, they're relaxed, they're celebrating, they come out the door, or they come down the aisle, no one else is around them, just you and them, and they're just gonna be, and they're gonna be smiling, and they might kiss again, you just be firing, because that's what I do, and I get a lot of good shots at that very, very moment. Um, typically, it's outside, or it goes from indoors to outside. Um, we'll talk more about how to do that, but you gotta be quick on your feet and know what that's gonna be like, and possibly have your second shooter out there to cover a wide and a close, because that only happens once. So again, depending on whether you did a first look or not, after the ceremony and before the reception, this is typically when we do the pose shots. So that's all the wedding party shots with the parents, with uh, close family members. Typically you'll take them away and you'll go do every pose shot. The best thing to do is get a list beforehand. If it's a small wedding you can probably just accomplish it very quickly. But if it's a big wedding make sure you have a list. We want the bride and the groom and the groom's parents, the bride and the groom and the bride's parents, the bride and the groom and the groom and the bride's parents. Like so there's tons of different options that you can have there. You're gonna have the groom and the groomsmen, the bride and her bridesmaids, which you could have done also at getting ready. It just kind of depends on the schedule and the timing of the day. Every wedding is going to be different, so you really got to plan that out. The coordinator should help you with that, but you never know. Um, another good reason for the first look is you can be doing that also during the first look section if there's time, which will save time later. Um, this is also gets too complicated if you do that near the ceremony. A big tip for me is to get these shots, get those post shots either during getting ready or during the first look, or in between the ceremony and the reception. If you do them too close to the re uh, ceremony reception, you're gonna have people coming in and trying to get into these shots, and these are crucial important shots that usually the couple will want, posed shots that they can put on their mantle, that they can share on Facebook, um, and it's just easier if you're away from other people. We're done with the ceremony, we got the posed shots, we're going on to the reception, to the drinks. Um, I, as a wedding photographer at this point, feel relaxed. All the hard parts done. You've gotten the ceremony, you've gotten the most pivotal parts, you've gotten the getting ready, you've gotten the post shots, you can kind of relax and do a little more candid photos. Don't relax too much because there are things happening. But keep in mind, the reception and the speeches are ha uh, to happen, and that's usually when they enter as a couple for the first time into the reception area. Those are good shots to get. Um, after that, they're gonna go right into certain things. Um, again, every reception is different. Talk to your wedding coordinator, talk to the couple about exactly what they're gonna do. Typically, it's the first dance. Um, after the first dance, they tend to do a welcome or a thanks. Um, then the speeches kind of start to ramp up if they're not eating first. Um, you need to get coverage of the speeches. You need to get them thanking the audience. After the speeches, there's things like the cake cutting. Um, also very important, you might need a couple of photographers there if it's a big one. If not, try and jockey yourself in position to do that. Um, there's things like the garter toss and the bouquet toss. Um, I'll show you a couple examples of those later. I, those are some of my favorite shots and one of my favorite things to do, depending on the situation. Um, and there's other different ceremonies depending, again, on the culture. Um, there's the money dance that happens a lot. Um, there's the father of the bride and um, bride dance. Uh, there's the mother of the groom and the groom dance, um, depending, again, on the couple. But just kind of make sure that you see all those pivotal moments. A good person to check with is um, if there's a DJ 
or there's a master of ceremonies, they will have a list of exactly what's going on. So I usually check in with them like right before the reception just to make sure I have all my bases covered. So throughout the day, the last thing that you need to be trying to get when you can is just candid photos of guests. A lot of times people like to refer back and look at like the photos of the guests that were there and, and who was kind of laughing and stuff. Try not to do too many post shots unless they ask for them. But I tend to sit back with like a 70 to 200 and just capture these really beautiful moments of people laughing, people hugging, people saying hi to the bride and groom at the reception. Sometimes I'll go around the room, get the small kid dancing, just have fun and try to create an atmosphere. What you're trying to do is collect enough photos to tell a story. So make sure you get what you can to just show the atmosphere and show everything. Um, typically I look at it like a movie. You want to cover your main characters and then you want to kind of cover wides and show the entire film. A good tip if you're if you if you've kind of covered everything, you got your candids, you got the ceremonies, you're just hanging out, it's kind of winding down at the end of the day, a good business tip is to kind of get some other photos of other vendors. You can take close-ups of let's say like the flowers or let's say the DJ or the master of ceremonies or even the reception hall. A lot of times you can take those photos and talk to the vendors about, hey, I got some photos of you, would you like them? And you can start to create a relationship that they could then recommend you for another wedding. So um, while you're taking photos, just keep that in mind and try and see if you can pop off a couple of those things for other vendors. It works really well and um, they're really appreciative too because um, they need stuff for their websites and their own business. So those are some of the basic things of what to shoot. Now there's a million things that you can be shooting and you should be shooting that I kind of left out small details. Like at the beginning you might need to shoot the rings and the dress and the shoes and all those things. In the next section we're gonna talk about how to shoot those things and we'll go more into those small details in each section and I'll try to break down and show you examples of how I shot it and why I shot it and all that. So keep in mind that I've been referring to our couple as a bride and a groom. Every wedding is going to be different, whether it's bride and bride, groom and groom, or bride and groom. Just make sure to be prepared for any situation. Each couple is going to have different key moments and you need to know exactly what's going to happen and be prepared.